hey, 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 hey. December 29th, 2020 in Big Bear, California. How you guys doing today? I got some sleep finally. I didn't get to sleep till like six in the morning though. Can you believe it? I lasted that long. But then I got some sleep and I just woke up. It's noon. So I'm stoked. But I'm behind on my work. <coughs> So this is the storm aftermath, folks. This is what town looks like after our storm. Funny enough, these clouds look, look like they could bring us a couple snow showers, even though we're not supposed to get anything today. So we're gonna do a, a valley tour. There's so much traffic though. So we'll, we might not be able to do the whole valley, but we'll do the best we can. All right. A lot of snow around here. We'll take it. We love this stuff. The plows really did a great job overnight. Good job, you guys. They did. They did a great job. And when I was telling you guys that the main roads in town seem pretty good, like for me, this is pretty damn pretty darn good like uh if you're in a two-wheel drive and you have snow chains and you're driving normally you'll be totally fine on like this it's getting up the mountain that i worry about for you guys once you're up here you'll be fine um some of the side streets are still extremely treacherous and it's going to be sometimes hard to get to your house and and whatnot if you don't have the proper vehicle right now but it's still uh yeah <laughs> buy my last pack of cigarettes right now oh my gosh I'm so 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 happy one thing I noticed since I haven't smoked ever living in cold temperatures like this because when I moved up here I quit smoking that January the, that first January so it's been like a long time um, or no I was chewing tobacco back then I, I quit smoking but I was chewing tobacco um, and then I quit that so yeah I don't know what my point is, you guys, but I, I, I'm just getting up right now, so my brain's a little scrambled on top of being scrambled when I'm not tired. So, <laughs> anyway, it's Stater Bros. Set. I grew up on a little island that has 106 houses on 107 lots, and Elsie Stater. And her husband, obviously one of the Stater brothers, resides there. And for Halloween, they had, she would leave out a, a basket of the large candy bars. And I was that kid who would put the whole basket in my bag. And I even felt bad about it. I knew what I was doing was wrong and I felt so bad about it, but I would somehow justify it. Even feeling bad about it is the weirdest thing. But yeah. <laughs> Anyway, we're going to stop here for a moment, guys. Give me a sec. All right, guys. So we just left that gas station. It just looks so gorgeous out here, guys. Even this side of town. Those mountains over there got a lot of snow. You know we got a good snowfall when those mountains are completely covered on that side of town. That's awesome. <coughs> and then... Last night, I got a couple, uh, like late, late night while I was falling, trying to like fall asleep and stuff. Um, and I'm gonna make them today. A couple people sent a few like uh, cash app and Venmos and stuff. So I'm gonna make you guys a video after this one. And I'll post them tonight. I really appreciate you guys so much. It helps tremendously. I, I mean, seriously, you guys, it helps so much. Cause I put so much wear and tear on this car and so much gas and a lot of money on the e e equipment. And my equipment tends to like end up having issues because I'm so crazy with it. It gets wet, even though the GoPros are supposed to be okay with getting wet. I don't know. I don't know. But here's Snowplay right here. 
That's where you guys can go sledding. It's a fun place to go sledding. <coughs> you pay to go sledding there, but it's worth it. It really is. So you don't have to deal with uh, going into like someone's backyard potentially and risking uh, trespassing and stuff like that. Because in Big Bear, we believe in our guns. And you just uh, you don't want to get the wrong person in the, on, on the wrong day. Wow, this is a lot of snow in town, guys. This is awesome. All right, hang on a second. Big Bear City right now. <coughs> and I ordered some of that cough stuff that one of you suggested for me. I ordered it on Amazon and it'll be here tomorrow. I ordered it late last night. So right now it's 29 degrees. As I told you guys yesterday, we, we aren't supposed to, to get above freezing today at all. But some of this snow, uh, snow that you see melted, that's from the radiational heating. That's from when the clouds are not in the way, the sun beating down. And even though it's, it's, it's below freezing, the radiational heating is, will still create snow melt. So, however, like the day after it snows, it's not as effective with the radiational melt because the snow reflects the heat. But now, like by tomorrow, and when there's a little more dirt and stuff on the snow and it changes colors a little bit, it's gonna start melting really fast. Especially tomorrow once we get above freezing. Then up here is my favorite Mexican restaurant up here on the right. It's called Cocina de Mexico. It's really good. I'll show you. It's on the corner of Big Bear Boulevard and Sawmill. Right here on the right, it's a yellow building. Right on the corner, see, Cocina de Mexico, Mexican food, right there. It's not yellow, I guess, it's like a brownish yellow. Great smoke shop right there. My friend Sahil owns that. He's a great guy. When you guys are up here and you need, need anything for from smoke shops up here, he's he's the biggest and best smoke shop, and he gives the best prices. He's the coolest guy ever. Ever. His name is Sahil. Wow, look at that. That'd be fun to sled on, but you'd come sledding right into the street, so that wouldn't be fun. pretty long video you guys so it's gonna take a while for me to upload it you guys are I wanted to have it ready by now but it, I hope you guys understand I needed to sleep I didn't have a choice like there was nothing I could do if I tried to like stay up there would have been no way like I, I would have had to use like illegal drugs to stay up or something and I'm not willing to do that so <coughs> you guys are worth it but for me to like uh, get back into my old habits like that would not be good so um, I have to live life on life's terms and do the best I can with what, uh, with what energy I provide for myself. 
So that's that's what I try to do. So yeah, we're at Big Bear City right now. And we're heading to Sugarloaf right now. Traffic seems to be moving at a decent pace. Doesn't seem like we have as many people up here as I thought we would. Not because of COVID, honestly, because there will still be enough people who want to come, come have fun. And, you know, so, yeah. <coughs> seems like there's not as many people as I thought. So right here, if you guys can find a place to park, like like across the street here, on, on one of these side streets, and then just cross the street right here. I'm not, I don't, I, I mean, I don't see trespassing. I mean, the fence is like a no trespassing sign itself, but I I don't see any trespassing signs over here. So if you park over there and then just cross the street and walk up this hill and sled, you'll just sled right here and you won't sled into the street. You'll be good. <coughs> Man, I'm so over this cough. Seriously, just redonkulous. Okay, we're on Maple, and this is the main drag up to Sugarloaf. And right when it's snowing good and stuff like that, this is one of the most dangerous roads in all of the... Uh, Bear Valley. Right here. <coughs> and then Big Bear High School is right here on the right. I'll get a nice picture of that for a view of that for you guys. But yeah, it said we weren't supposed to get any snow today, but it looks like it looks like it's we could get a couple snow showers, you guys. So I'm gonna say we're gonna get a couple, like a couple really light snow showers today. Just a couple snow flurries coming out of some of these these clouds. But that's the high school right there, Big Bear High School. It's a pretty big school. And as I said in, in previous videos, I'm from Newport Beach and. When our sports teams would, would play teams up here, these kids were tough, man. Holy moly, they were tough. Small town, not that much talent you would think to choose from because it's such a small town. But my goodness, these kids have grit up here. It's, it's so awesome. But yeah, so I gotta let you guys go for a quick second. All right, so we just made a right onto Baldwin and then we have to make a left onto this street and then hang on a second. Privacy reasons, I gotta shut it off. All right, guys, so we're leaving Sugarloaf. We're on Baldwin. That park looks so beautiful with snow in it. We're on Baldwin Lane. And this is the other route up into Sugarloaf area. This is the way I suggest people take when there's ice and snow on the roads because it's a lot less treacherous than taking maple. So as I said, we're going to be, uh, yeah, we got the valley tour to take care of right now. So we're not gonna go right, like up to Onyx Summit again. We're gonna go left here, which is gonna be Highway 38. And then we're gonna go through Baldwin and then on North Shore and through Fonskin and to the dam and back. So you guys can get a sense of everything. And then I wanna see uh, the Big Bear snow rule with it, without any snow falling or anything like that. It's gonna be super cool to see how little snow is in Baldwin at the very end compared to at the Big Bear Dam. So this is Highway 38 now, you guys. This is what you guys would be coming up from, like, uh, the Mentone area. 
It's a longer drive up the mountain, but I think it's safer. Although you do hit the highest elevation in the San Bernardino National Forest for a road, it's 8,443 feet. And so you can get a, a more, like more snow up there. However, the road is much more straight, less cliffs to fall off. And it's the road that I would have my mom drive up if there's inclement weather, because even though, as I said, it gets up higher elevation where there's a possibility for a lot more snow, um, that's just for a short period. And it's not like at, in that spot, there aren't really many cliffs for you to fall off. So you'll be fine. But look at how beautiful the sky is today. Wow. This is amazing, you guys. It just brings me into such a beautiful mood. And since I woke up today, I haven't checked any of my YouTube comments. I finished responding to every single one from, there were like a th about a thousand comments over the six or seven videos. And I responded to them all. Um, I got back, like it was probably about four or five in the morning when I was done and was able to crash out. But it feels good, man. It feels good helping you guys out like this. You guys are awesome people. Yeah, anyway, so you guys would typically be going left here to head into Big Bear City and Big Bear Lake. We're technically in Big Bear City right now, but it says Big Bear City one mile to the left. But technically we're in Big Bear City right now. But we're making a right here. So this is Baldwin. We're entering Baldwin Lake area. <coughs> snow though look at some of these roofs obviously the ones that have cars in front uh, typically have people inside so they have the heaters on and it melts a lot of the snow on the roof but so we're gonna look for some of the houses that don't have anybody in there which are easy to tell because you got a ton of snow still on the roofs the homes that are occupied typically a lot of the snow is melted off the roof from the heat inside but like this house right here it doesn't look like it's being occupied at all that one yeah so there's not that much snow there's maybe four inches on the roof here comes Santa oh, oh, oh. looked at the weather today but when I was looking at it early this morning it looked like sometime next week we could get like three straight days of inclement weather it didn't look like much none of the days even had snow accumulations of one to three inches so didn't look like much I'm hoping that changed or changes but anything is good this is where I used to go sledding when I first moved up here they put this new fence around now it says no trespassing. But there's another spot up here too that you can go that I don't think there's a fence. Right here to the right. I'll show you in just a second. Unless that was the area back there, I think that was actually it. Yeah, I believe that was it back there. So they have it totally fenced off now. <coughs> no one lives there, nothing. They just don't want the tourists to have fun, I guess. I don't get it the tourists that support this place but oh well oh here's one of the spots that you can sled right here obviously there, there, there's some trees but you can find spots to come straight down right there or th through here and then here's another spot okay no this is the spot my bad as I'm talking smack yeah this is the spot right here super cool go up here and just look at that 
super fun. This house is great, right on the prairie. I mean, seriously, little house on the prairie right there. <coughs> this one's unoccupied, it looks like, or maybe not, there's, still, there's a decent amount of snow melt on the roof. I'd love to have one of these houses right on the freaking prairie, that's so awesome. I think it was my first January here, or maybe the second, they did a Super Bowl commercial a, a, I think it was a beer commercial filmed right here where that car is parked and they had all the filming trucks parked right over here in the same parking spot area. It was like a whole Hollywood set right here. It was so crazy cool. And then I got to watch the Super Bowl commercial and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's Big Bear. Oh my God, I'm, I live right there. Oh my God. And then the next video I did, I, I like, I reproduced that stupid commercial. <laughs> it was so funny. That video is on my channel, but I have like 2,500 videos or something of, of weather, so it's it might be hard to find, but it's right around Super Bowl time, maybe four years ago, so check that video out. You can see me like uh, trying to do all the acting like they did in the commercial. It was pretty dumb. <laughs> <coughs> It's so nice that we have this whole huge empty area up here. But I hope it remains that way. I hope they never, you know, do anything to Baldwin Lake part, like industrialize this area or anything like that. That would not be cool. It's just so beautiful out there. And as I've said before, when we get a bunch of rain or like a huge amount of snow, this whole area will turn into a lake. So all this property becomes lake property for, for the most part for about a month and a half or so, two months, when we get a ton of rain or a ton of snow. And it's awesome, it's so beautiful. So yeah, over on this side of town, not nearly as much snow. It looks like they got a good amount because the snow plows plow the stuff on the side, right? But it's really not that much snow, you guys. I'd say they maybe got four inches over here, maybe. I mean, isn't this crazy? This is the, the, the Big Bear snow rule, you guys. <coughs> this side of town is it's always a lot drier because we have the desert climate right behind us, literally right behind us here. It's just a massive desert. It's 
So yeah, just keep paying attention to the the lack of snow out here. And then when we eventually get to the Big Bear Dam, after I stop one more place on the way, you'll be able to see. It's a huge difference in snow from this area to Fonskin. Huge difference. There's, there's gotta be at least three times as much in Fonskin right now. I mean, guaranteed at least double. But I'm, I'm thinking probably three times as much. And it's just an eight mile difference <coughs> as the crow flies. did snow all the way over on these hills over here and even these ones out here by the dump so you know it was a decent storm when we get a good amount of snow all the way out into those hills straight ahead. So if we turn right at this stop sign we're heading down the hill on highway 18 Basically, you just go up to the top right here, which is about 100 yards, and then you'll make a left and you'll start heading down the mountain to head into Lucerne Valley, Apple Valley, Victorville, that area. Hey, doggy! Look at the dog in the back. Hey, doggy! What's up, dog? It's a cute German Shepherd. At least it looks like a German from here. traffic up here though. This looks like it's going to be a passing moment guys. spun out and it looks like they're okay though oh wait no that's not a spin out they're just in the driveway my bad huh so I'm wondering what all this is about then <coughs> Such a beautiful area. And these clouds are moving backwards. They're going back into town. That's kind of weird. Yeah, there's not much snow over here at all. I mean, even the snow plows didn't plow much over here. Look, it's just really not much. You can even see a couple little, not dry patches, but close enough to dry patches. Oh, I hope this guy's okay. <coughs> That's what I'm getting on my car sometime, is a very nice wind system so I can help people out. And when it gets super gnarly, it'll be an extra source of income also. But, you know, I'd, I'd rather help, help the tourists out for free. But there becomes a point where like, you know, if people don't have chains on and they get stuck and stuff, like, you know, we all have to make make some something. Like, a, you know, that's the services rendered deal type thing, right? But overcharging people and taking advantage, that's something that I just do not stand for. Um, but come up here prepared, and if if you're prepared, I guarantee you people will be more more willing to help for, for less. But if you like come up here and defy all the suggestions and then you get stuck, um, it'll People will still help you, don't don't get me wrong, but they'll feel less sorry for you. If that makes any sense. This is just beautiful. Baldwin Lake. Unfortunately, 
we got some, some, some serious traffic, but that's all good. so I had to do that. It is so pretty over here, guys. Oh my gosh. I wish all of you could be here having fun. have been like just about on the last bit of air for the horn usually I can get about five or six seconds of the horn going off before the, the, the air compressor needs to turn on trying to get anywhere we got nowhere nowhere to go right now except just to, to finish this this video
32 degrees over here on this side. But I guarantee you once we get back to the other side of town, it's gonna get back down to the upper 20s. <coughs> Alright, yeah, that sun is hot. Holy moly. But yeah guys, very little snow on this side and stuff like that. As I said, keep an eye on this little bit of snow compared to what we're gonna get on the other side of town. Now it's only about five mile or six mile difference, six miles. Obviously the higher in elevation you go, 
the more snow you're gonna get. And we're climbing pretty significantly and rapidly. All right, guys, hang on. I gotta stop it now. All right, you guys, so we just left that place. So look, we're way up here at the top on the Bear City side though, but there's a good amount of snow over here. back to Big Bear Boulevard. It's not a long drive, but it's very steep. Thank goodness the snow and ice has melted off this road because this is pretty nuts. But yeah, just look at how much snow is right here and then just right when we get to the bottom there's gonna be a significant difference as soon as we turn right. And yeah, as I said, it's gonna be a long video, folks. Say the further we go this way, the more we're gonna see. Are they making a snow? No, they're having a snowball fight. It's super cool. It'd be nice to get one of those snow shovels on my car. Also, besides the winch system, get a snow shovel to it as well. And I mean, the amount of money I can generate just just from applying those two uh, contraptions to my vehicle would be huge. In the winter time, the guys who like uh, like clear out your driveways and stuff like that, they make so much money. They make in like three or four months when we have a decent snow year, what most people will make in a few years just in a couple months. It's insane how much money they make. It takes like five minutes just to drive through one decent sized driveway with their plow. Charge like a few hundred bucks. I mean, it's crazy. But it's so worth it because people don't want to dig for days. They'll pay hundreds of dollars, no problem. But it costs a lot of money to buy these plows and stuff, so that's why everyone doesn't have them. <coughs> So we are coming up to Stanfield Cutoff, but we're gonna go straight through to Fonskin and back around. at a friend's house and she's a uh, she does a bunch of different things but she's like a snowboard instructor and she she got really injured she like she busted her ACL last night or something skiing so drop by just to see how she's doing pretty crazy Subaru is super lifted. Look at that, it's like six feet off the ground. Temperatures. Temperature is back down to 30. Temperature is back down to 30 from 32. There's Snow Summit. That's such a beautiful view.
So even though we're further this way, if we were on that side of town, there'd be way more snow. But we'll get to that point. On the North Shore, it gets less snow, but as I say, the further this direction you go, the more accumulation there will be. But on this far on the North Shore, it's not as much, but as we get closer to Fonskin and closer to the dam, you'll see. sky looks so pretty guys wow it really does I know this isn't smart but we're doing it anyway just kidding I'm <laughs> just kidding. I knew I'd fuck. <laughs> I didn't say the F word, you know, half of it. But I thought I would get a nice little, uh... <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. I'm sorry. If you guys watch the videos, like, not too long ago, I would pass all the time. But you guys have really made it, so I'm more patient. I really am more patient. Totally more patient. Oh, that'd be a fun little sledding area right there. Unfortunately, you'd go right into the street. But yeah, this is awesome. skin right now. But the other side of Fonskin is where you get a lot of snow. I mean, there's a lot of snow here. Don't get me wrong. I mean, look at these roofs. There's about twice as much just right here as there was out in Baldwin. It got about seven, eight inches on some of these roofs. Some of these roofs. <coughs> and what did I tell you about the temperature getting back into the 20s once we got to this side of town? It's 29 degrees. Of little hills right here if you find a place to park somewhere hike through here and go sledding over there that would be fun just please 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 if your sleds break do not leave them right there we cherish this town so please try to help us keep it clean if you can please because remember this is your vacation spot too like uh it's not like when it gets trashed up here like there's a lot, there's a lot of other places to go locally like this is your place this is your this, this is your spot guys so you gotta take care of it oh look at that ski jump look at that So 
once we get to the other side of downtown Fonskin, that's where we'll start. Well, we're starting to see a lot more snow right here anyway, but that's from that area to the dam will be the most snow. And, and then from the dam for about a mile headed back towards Moon Ridge, it'll be huge amounts of snow. This is right on, this used to be lakefront property right here. Lots of snow on those roofs. There's about eight, nine, ten inches on the roofs. Entering downtown Fonskin once we make this little turn here to the right. Okay. You guys can see the amount of snow over here. Look at the size of the road. A lot different than it was over in in uh, in Baldwin, huh? The piles on the side are a lot larger. The roofs have more snow on them, at least the ones that aren't occupied. Look at that big cornice right there. take those business calls. And yeah, over in this part of Fonskin, there's a lot of hills you can sled up. Uh, look, they're, they're doing it right here. Lots of little areas. And then these people are parking here. I don't think they're supposed to. So just always watch out for the no parking anytime signs, you guys, because the cops will give you tickets. Uh, fast, they'll, it'll be so fast your heads will spin, I promise. So just be super careful. That would be a bummer to get a ticket while you're coming up here to have fun. Already spending a ton of money to come here. <laughs> you know, like why, it just would be ridiculous to spend another hundred bucks on a freaking ticket. This part of town, the roads still have snow and ice caked on them. <coughs> it's not too bad though. It looks worse than it is. Just don't tailgate, give yourself plenty of time.
Sorry about that, I had to take that call. so beautiful guys oh my gosh look at all the snow got a ton of snow over here oh this guy he's stuck in his subi no no can't be not in a subaru in like hardly any snow too oh he's doing he's getting out come on you got it you can do it dude i'm almost tempted to turn around and just put my car up against the back of his and push him I've done that quite a few times for for quite a bit of people. When they're just barely stuck, I'll just put my bumper on their bumper and just hit my gas and they'll be gone. It works. As I said, I put my vehicle and everything through a bunch of crap, so that's why the donations help, man. <laughs> Huge, so when I do these things that might you know create damage for my car, but it helps others, your, your guys' help is significant. It really is significant. Tow truck turned from Stanfield cutoff to the left heading to Fonskin. I'm assuming since he's driving through Fonskin, he's gonna turn right at the Big Bear Dam and go down Highway 18, but we'll see. I don't know why it matters, but. <laughs> the water's pretty choppy. I got a great question asked, does this lake produce lake effect snow at all? And unfortunately it does not. Um, it produces a good amount of fog sometimes. And then it'll be so thick sometimes that, you know, there'll be moisture. Well, obviously the fog is moisture, but it'll it'll be so heavy that there'll be dew everywhere. So I guess technically, yeah, but yeah, anyway. Gosh, it's just too beautiful, this town. Oh no, right to the telephone pole. Jeez, that poor guy. That's such a bummer, oh man. Seriously, you guys come up here to have a great time and spend a bunch of money to get here. And then a bunch of money to stay here. Because you know, you gotta, Factor in all the skiing costs, the warm clothing costs, the gas, the super high priced lodging when we have snow. Like it's just, they, yeah, it's, it's very expensive. So it really breaks my heart to see when you guys get like an accident and stuff up here. So just please be as, as safe as you guys can be. I wonder how many of these people are, oh, are actually gonna be going right. Every one of them, cool. So we're at the dam now. You turn right, we go down Highway 18 to Highway 330 or stay on 18 to get down. This is nice, being in the, fir in the very front here, we're not gonna deal with any traffic. But yeah, this is the snowiest part of town right here. This is where you get the most snow. Look at those piles right there. That's from the snow plow. Compare it to like the five inches or six inches of snow plow on the other side of town. This is a little thick right here, guys. Even I'm, even I'm getting a little bit loose here. I mean, 
I know what I'm doing. I'm feeling it, but yeah, I have control. But I'm just letting you guys know that it's, it's a little, a little gnarlier than I thought it would be right here, to be honest. But then again, it's the snowiest part of town, so I don't know why I was thinking it wouldn't be, why it would be a lot better than this. But. <coughs> This storm came in, just hammered us real quick. It was a fast, fast storm. Just came in and dumped a bunch real quick and left. I wish we'd get those storms that stall because that tends obviously to give us a ton of snow. <coughs> Knew we'd catch up to someone eventually. Just didn't think it would be this soon. stressed out when I'm doing these these videos because of my business and when I was first starting out like my niche in my business is my customer service and my extraordinary timely fashion that I, I show up and I assist so um, I just I don't want to change any of that and uh, but the longer I've been doing these videos and the longer I've known my people my customers you could say they're really cool with me and uh, I don't do this often these these videos are not often because there's not much snow so that's uh that, that's what i'm talking about and uh yeah look at all this snow here these poor people putting on chains gosh it's such a pain in the butt it really is a pain in the butt i mean the more expensive the chains that you buy you guys the easier they are to put on just like with my drone it's like it's the nicest drone on the market for like uh like just a regular person like me and uh I do so well with the drone because it's so simple to fly. If I let go of the controls, it just stays in the perfect spot. Like it's, it's just amazing. But if you spend a lot less money on the drone, uh, there's a lot bigger potential for you to crash it. My drone has like six or seven incredible sensors on it. And sometimes when I'm trying to get to a higher elevation or a faster speed, I'll put it in sport mode and that turns off the sensors. <laughs> uh, so, but I can go up to like 45 miles an hour or like close to that, it's crazy with that drone. And I can fly up to about five miles in one direction and then fly it five miles back. But I'd have to be in the desert for something like that where there's no obstructions at all. I can fly it about two and a half miles now up here at the most in one direction and then fly it back, so like five miles round trip. 
but yeah. Anyway, hang on a second. Sorry about that. Had to grab that again. Look, all these people are leaving town. It sucks you guys have to leave like the day after the snow's done. I wish you guys could stay up here and have some fun in this, but look at every, all these people are leaving you guys. These people are leaving Big Bear. I'm so glad I didn't do the video coming this way. That's This is precisely why I went the other direction around town and did it that, that direction because I knew that this traffic was going to be insane. I didn't think it was going to be this bad though. Getting out of town. It's going to be nuts for you guys driving down the mountain. I'm telling you, if you guys are stuck in this traffic, I'm really sorry about that. And uh, we're getting some snowflakes. Can you believe it? Just a little tiny little light bit of snowflakes coming down. Not much. And it's gone. It's gone. Man, there's a lot of snow on this side of town like usual. <coughs> so you guys can really see the huge just discrepancy in snow between this side and the other side of town. I mean, it's night and day difference. Oh my gosh, you poor people. And then there aren't any restrooms all the way until you get to Running Springs, so. Oh man, I feel bad for you guys in this traffic. I know you guys can't hear me, or you're not gonna know about this video until you're down the hill anyway, but if I was you, I would turn around and just go down Highway 38, drive all the way back to the other side of town, take 38 all the way up to Onyx Summit and down. Yeah, it's gonna be like from this point about, geez, 25 miles longer than it usually would be to get down the hill. But knowing that you'll be moving the whole time for the most part, you'll probably end up getting down the hill faster if you turn around from here and go all the way to the other side of town. I've done it before when I've had to go down the hill and got stuck in traffic like this and one time it was for my job interview at Stater Brothers down the hill at the corporate office. And uh, I left like an hour and a half early. So because it takes like 40 minutes for me to get from here down the hill, 45 minutes. And I know you guys are like, geez, that's fast. But that's just how I do it. And uh, but I got stuck in this traffic and I started panicking because I had no money. I had nothing, nothing like in this job was so important for me or I, or I, or I, I was going to be homeless. And uh long story short I was 10 minutes late but I called them and I explained to them and they were so nice about it because it was a huge class of orientation and uh, but then they had the cotton swab test and I failed it for cannabis I'm not trying to like hide it but the crazy thing is is that I think it was legal at that point and I'm surprised there aren't huge class action lawsuits these days for people who don't get jobs because uh, they fail a cannabis test I mean People get drunk all the time and they're hung over and they, they, they go to work and the boss is fine. Like it, the way I see it is just don't be buzzed or inebriated in any way while you're working for someone else who was kind enough to give you that opportunity. Like, like, uh, so it doesn't matter what you do, but as I said, I'm surprised there hasn't been like a class action lawsuit, um, against a lot of these spots that still aren't giving people jobs because they don't pass a, a marijuana drug test. I mean, if it's legal, doesn't that kind of seem like discrimination? I mean, isn't that like the most the most obvious discrimination right there? If it's legal, they're not hiring you because of that, because of their own personal beliefs. So that's, you know, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, a business is technically allowed to, well, actually, no, they're, they're not technically allowed to hire who they want, but if they hire who they want, like, and it's not the great staff, then people aren't gonna shop there. Like that's why capitalism is is so great and stuff because if you have any of these racist idiots out there and stuff like if they own 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 a shop there's no point in like trying to like shut them down because who's going to shop at a shop where there's racist people that own, that like are blatantly owning it and blatant about um their lack of self-respect and hating other people like yeah so it's I don't know man that's the great thing about capitalism is that uh, the people, the bad people, 
the people who just don't belong on this planet. Those are the, the people who hate because of things we can't, we can't even, we can't change it. Like I can't change that I'm a, a, a tiny little white dude who can't, who can barely touch the bottom of the net on a freaking basketball hoop. Like, like, but like these are immutable characteristics. I, I can't change it. And it's just so sad that so many people hate out there towards people just for how they look. Like, like if you really think about that, like, like, wow, how pathetic is that? And how, how much just self-hatred do you have to have to despise somebody just because of how they look? That just proves to me that you're hurting so bad And you, you, you know, like I, I just, I, I'm just really sorry that that hate fills the heart for some people like that. Um, but there, there is a way out of that, and it's just knowing that humanity is good and seeing it with your own eyes. And this channel has helped me see that tremendously. The comments that I get uh, keep me going, you guys. I'm telling you, the comments keep me going. You guys leave the nicest most lovely comments but anyway we're in traffic we're gonna stop this right now all right guys sorry about that well we're about to enter the big bear lake village the village the bears the village the big bear the bulls the bears and the bulls the bulls and the bears <laughs> mike ditka he's with the bears Okay, we're gonna stay here sometime soon. One of the friends on this channel asked me to stay at Lagunita Lodge for them. So we're gonna do that too, but we're gonna stay here as well. Just gorgeous. Traffic, traffic, traffic. Yeah, I grew up on the Brady Bunch. For those of you who got that little Marsha, Marsha, Marsha thing. And funny enough, uh, growing up, I was I I was very fortunate growing up, and I grew up in a house that today is worth uh, just just about thirteen million dollars, if you can believe it. Back in the seventies, my dad bought it for like two hundred and seventy-five thousand or three hundred thousand, something like that. And it's right on the water in Newport Beach on a little private island called Linda Isle. And uh, it's only like 5,200 square feet, but it has seven bedrooms, nine bathrooms, an elevator, two staircases. We had a 69 foot yacht, like a 40 foot catamaran and uh, another little, uh, like a Boston Whaler type of a thing. Um, it was like, I, but growing up like that, I didn't know that like everyone doesn't live like that, you know? And going through life and experiencing homelessness myself and this and that and plenty of drug rehabs and stuff like like uh, it makes me admire my mom and dad that much more they came from nothing my dad was put in in lots of weekends where he grew up in Chicago in an orphanage because his parents worked and they couldn't afford like babysitters or like this and that so he was in an orphanage a lot as a kid and my dad's 88 years old he had me at a very late age and uh, he put himself through UCLA uh, pre-med and then he drove a taxi in Chicago to put himself through Northwestern Medical School and he became a very successful, super successful psychiatrist. And he was chief psychiatrist um, after his, uh, he had a really, really big private practice. He dealt with lots of like Hollywood stars back in the day in the 70s and 80s. And uh, um, what was I, what was I saying? Uh, Oh yeah, so after his private practice, he ended up becoming a chief psychiatrist at Lompoc Federal Penitentiary and worked there for seven years as the chief. And it's one of the scariest places on earth in terms of, of, like, of like prisons. Well, not on earth, but in America. It's a federal prison. As, you, as I say, you know, Lompoc Federal Penitentiary. One of his clients, or clients, uh, one of the inmates was the was the dude who bombed the World Trade Center in 1993 I think his name was like Ramsey Yusuf or like something and he was my dad's patient and, and my dad told me so much 
about it and, and that the like uh, it's just amazing what the guy did like uh, such an incredibly brilliant man and blah 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 but long story short he uh, um, the, the guy basically moved here like 20 years prior to bombing the World Trade Centers in 1993 um, and married an American woman had kids he was the coach of like the baseball team he ran the Boy Scouts and stuff all of it was a ploy to get into the society and get in with the people so no one would ever think anything of it and then he did that how crazy is that and then when and then when my dad like um, talks to him the guy doesn't care about his family nothing like 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 that it was all because of what of uh, of what he he believes the interpretation of his religion is and that's to destroy the infidels and stuff like that and uh, so for 20 years he was a family man boy scout leader coach of his kids baseball teams and stuff and all to do this deed to kill a bunch of people and to try to terrorize America and he did it's sad but anyway I gotta turn this off right now for a second all right so we kind of cut through the village a little bit on this side street called Petter Street we almost got to the edge but there was so much traffic so we're just gonna take this little side street to Big Bear Boulevard where we shouldn't have any really traffic to get onto the boulevard we do, uh, we've got this car and then this car we're gonna be behind Okay, what does that license plate mean? C D N C. C D N C. I gotta figure that out. Oh, California Lutheran University, probably. Nope. Even though that's where she's alumni from, I was thinking maybe. If it said CDM, I would think she's from my area, of, like Corona Del Mar and Newport Beach. Yeah, so you guys can see that's the village right there. We're just one street down. Now we're headed back to Moon Ridge. These people walking on the side of the road with their backs facing us, literally on the side of the icy snowy road, just not, not smart at all, you guys. You guys gotta be super careful because cars are gonna try to avoid you the best they can. But on the, in this type of weather, you can get loose easy, especially when you don't know how to drive in this stuff. So just guys, please, if you're gonna walk on in, in the road, just oblivious to everything, at least walk facing the traffic so you have a second to get out of the way when the car starts sliding at you. I hope I, like, I don't mean to sound so frustrated about that, but that's just an accident waiting to happen that can be completely avoided just by using some, just the most basic common sense. The most basic of common sense. Uh, I don't want any of you guys to get hurt, man. Like, this is all out of love. It's not out of anger, it's all out of love. If I didn't care about you guys, I would just say, oh, oh I hope those guys don't get hit, because it's probably gonna happen. See, this guy's doing it right, and the guy behind him's doing it right. I mean, he still shouldn't be in the street, but he's facing us at least. There's a lot of snow on this side of town. I'm loving it, guys. Snow, guys. Right, we're gonna 
gonna turn down Summit Boulevard right here and then turn on the Brownie Lane. But then again, they might not let us because it's, well, it's 2.30. And we might be able to um, be able to turn left. While it's the earlier part of the day, they have traffic people not letting people go onto those streets because a lot of people try to sneak into Snow Summit through some of the side streets without following the rest of the traffic. And they take that very seriously here because other people have to wait these long, unbearable waits. So I guess they don't want others to get, you know, ahead of you, which is cool. This fake snowboarder always gets me. Looks like a real person every time. Thank you. So this is the way to Snow Summit, you guys. Look at how packed it is. Look at how much fun this looks. Everyone's just having a great time. So they wouldn't let me turn down Brownie. So it's still not late enough in the day yet. And the reason why there's not any traffic driving into Snow Summit right now is because it's pretty much the end of the day. Another hour and a half and they close, I believe. I think the last lift goes at four o'clock or maybe 359, I don't know. But we're gonna turn on Evergreen, <coughs> which is where this truck's coming out, this black truck. Oh, this is cool, guys. I mean, you guys can see the huge difference in snowfall now over here than on the other side of town. Turn the video off at Apples, you guys, okay? Because <coughs> that's right next to my house. It's gonna take me about an hour just to patch the videos together and then another two hours to upload this. So forgive me, guys. Give me a long time before this is uploaded. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. But yeah, we're almost to where I'm gonna shut off. But yeah, this is just amazing, all the snow. Sides of the roads here look like mammoth. It's awesome. And I live just right across this little park on the other side. It's not a technical park, but you know what I'm saying. All right, guys. Love you guys loads. December 29, 2020. This is the snowfall aftermath. We basically did most of the city. We didn't go through Moon Ridge. But that's cool. That's cool. Now this guy's gonna make a left, and we're good here. All right. Peace out, guys. Love you all. 29th of December, 29 degrees in the Big Bear Lake area, 2:30 p.m.